Section 2, The Providence of Salvation. <clears throat> 1. The providence of salvation is the providence of restoration. This sinful world brings man sorrow and causes God to grieve, Genesis 6.6. 6. Would God then leave this world of grief as it is? If the world of goodness which God created for the utmost joy is to continue forever as a world of sin full of grief due to the human fall, God should be called a God of failure and inability. Therefore, God will save this world of sin by all means. To what extent should God save this world? First, God must save it to such an extent that man can be restored to the position he had reached before the fall of the first human ancestors. God must do this by completely driving out the evil power of Satan from this world of sin. Acts 26.18 then, God must develop His providence to such an extent that He can dominate the world directly through the fulfillment of the good purpose of creation. Acts 3.21 To save a sick man is to restore him through the status he had before the sickness occurred. To save a drowning man is to restore him to the state he was in before he began to drown. Likewise, to save a man fallen in sin means to restore him to the original sinless position which he enjoyed in the beginning. Therefore, God's providence of salvation is the providence of restoration, Acts 1.6, Matthew 17.11. The human fall is, of course, the result of man's own error. However, God, too, is responsible for the result as the Creator. If God had not created man, the fall would not have occurred. Therefore, God has felt compelled to restore the result of man's error to its original status before the fall. God is the everlasting subject. Therefore, the life of man, who was created as his eternal object of joy, should also have eternity. According to the principle of creation, God created man for eternity. Even though man fell, God cannot annihilate him, because this would nullify the principle of creation. Therefore, God must save man and restore him to his original position in creation. God promised to realize his three great blessings after the creation of man, Genesis 1.28. He says in Isaiah 46.11, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed and I will do it. According to his own words, God has been working to fulfill his promise by developing the providence of restoring these blessings long lost due to Satan. When Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 5.48, You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect, he meant that they should be restored to the position of the original man of creation. Seen from the principle of creation, the original man of creation should be as perfect as God, having eternal deity because of his oneness with God. 2. The Purpose of the Providence of Restoration what is the purpose of the providence of restoration? It is to realize the heavenly kingdom, God's eternal object of goodness, which was his original purpose of creation. In the beginning, God created men on earth and intended to realize the kingdom of heaven on earth, centering on them. However, he could not fulfill his will because of the human fall. Therefore, the primary purpose of the providence of restoration can only be to restore the kingdom of heaven on earth, Jesus, who came in order to fulfill the purpose of the providence of restoration, told his disciples to pray that God's will be done on earth, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6:10, and warned his people to repent, for the kingdom of heaven was at hand, Matthew 4:17. Because the purpose of the providence of restoration is to restore the kingdom of heaven on earth. 3. Human history is the history of the providence of restoration. We have previously clarified that God's providence of salvation is the providence of restoration. Therefore, human history is the period of the providence through which God intends to save fallen men and have them restore the original world of goodness. Let us now study from various standpoints the fact that human history is the history of the providence of restoration. Firstly, we will consider human history from the standpoint of the history of the development of cultural spheres. In all ages and countries, even evil men have had in common, the original mind's desire to follow goodness by repelling evil. Therefore, all entertain the identical fundamental purpose of pursuing and realizing goodness, though it is true that they have created a history of struggle through constant conflicts which arise 
from differences, according to time and place, in their respective standards of goodness and its attainment. Why then does the original mind of man direct itself irresistibly toward goodness? This is because God, the subject of goodness, created man as his substantial object in order to realize the purpose of goodness. Therefore, man's original mind seeks goodness, even though fallen men have been unable to lead good lives due to Satan's work. The goal of the history, which is woven by such men, should be to attain the world of goodness. However hard the original mind of man may struggle to attain goodness, man fails to find real goodness in this world under the rule of Satan. Therefore, man has come to find his subject of goodness in the world transcendent of time and space. What has been born out of this inevitable demand of man is religion. Man, who fell into ignorance of God due to the fall, has always tried to meet God by constantly pursuing goodness through religion, even though individuals, races, or nations of a certain religion may have perished, religion itself has survived up to the present. Let us now study these historical facts centering on the history of the rise and fall of nations. When we examine the history of China, we find that each age of Chun Tri was followed by a unified age of Qin, while the age of Qin Han, Xin, Hu Han, Sun Kyu, Si Qin, Tang Xing, and Nan Pei Chao were followed by the unified age of Sui and Tang. And the ages of the five dynasties, Pei Sang, Nan Sung, Huan, Ming, and Qing, were followed by today's Republic of China. Through all these ages, China has seen the rise and fall of many nations, and with this, many changes in political power. But the three Far Eastern religions of Confucianism, Buddhism, and Sun Kyo are still in full force. When we study the history of India, we see that the Mauryas Empire was followed by that of Andhra, which was followed in turn by those of the Gupta, Varudana, Saman, Razuni, 